Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. Today we're going to be doing just some tips and tricks on how to effectively and efficiently use LuxCore Render. I get a lot of questions, so I'm hoping to answer a lot of those general questions with this video. If you have any questions that don't get answered, please ask those down in the comment section. Now the first thing I think that's really important is to make sure that you have the latest build. So I'm going to put a link to this down below in the video description, but I think it's best for you to understand how to get here. So if I go back to the main website here, luxcorerender.org, and we go to development, GitHub. This is how you get the latest build. And we're gonna go right here where it says blend Luxcore, right here in repositories. So if we click there, there's gonna be all this stuff here, but really what you need to do is go here to where it says tags, then click on latest. And then on this list, you'll see here that this was updated April 8th. So you wanna make sure that you're always getting the latest development build because those tend to always work with the newer builds of Blender. And a lot of people seem to have issues with getting the, uh, the official download 2.6 that's on the website. This is the latest build that tends to work more with newer builds. So make sure that you click on the proper zip file for what you need. Now, once you've installed it, what I've noticed is that a lot of people seem to have some issues. So if we go up here to edit preferences and we take a look here at LuxCore, and you make sure to enable it and everything. I'm not gonna show how to you know, specifically you know, install this and everything, you should know how to do that. But if you look here under the GPU API, you can see that there's OpenCL and CUDA. So make sure that you've selected the right thing here, depending on which GPU you have. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can use OpenCL, but CUDA tends to work better. Another thing is that when you're starting up using LuxCore, either for the first time or you're installing a new version, what you need to do is you need to make sure that the computer actually like kind of installs all the proper drivers and everything to get the render engine to work properly. So what you need to do is over here, CPU will kind of always work properly right out of the uh, right out of the gate. But what you need to do if you want the GPU to work is you need to change this to GPU, but not just this. You need to go down here to the viewport render and change the device also to GPU. A lot of people miss this step and they think they have everything installed correctly and it's all working on their, their uh, GPU and it's working quickly and all this sort of stuff. And they'll notice, oh, it's really, really slow. So even with my GPU, it's really slow. So the reason is because they haven't changed the viewport render to that GPU. And you'll see here that the denoiser is on here. And I've noticed that the denoiser can sometimes cause issues with the viewport. So I always turn that off. And then when we go in here, we will set this to rendered. Now on your first go, this will probably say something like, you know, it's gonna take like 10 minutes or something to compile all of the shaders and everything else. Now, I noticed that it takes less than 10 minutes, but basically just turn that on, leave your computer for a while, let it do its thing, and then come back and it'll be usable just like this. So you can see here that everything's working correctly and we know that the GPU is being used. If we want to just double check, we can go over here to devices, update the device list right here, and you should see your devices here. We can even turn off the CPU devices and look through the rendered view. And it's just using my GPU now to render this out. Now for this project here that you saw in the thumbnail and what is available on my Gumroad, if you go down in the video description, there will be a link to download this scene. I basically used a really cool skull that was downloaded from a website. I'll provide that information in the video description as well where you can get this skull model. Um, but put some really cool effects, some uh, really cool shaders and stuff on it. But what you'll notice is that if you're doing something a lot more complex with light tracing, your light tracing can get a little bit tricky where it takes a long time to render while you're trying to set up materials and stuff like that. So what you can do is in your viewport render, you can turn off the light tracing here. So if I turn that off, it will render a lot faster because it's not trying to calculate all of that extra information. The other thing that you'll notice sometimes is if I turn on just a regular glass shader here and I take the light paths that I have set to 16, let's just set it to three. And I'm just gonna zoom in here on my skull. You'll see that it's really dark. It almost looks metallic. And a lot of people when they're doing jewelry renders and things like that, they'll see something that looks a lot like this. And no matter what they do, it just seems to be kind of crappy. So if we put six for our total light paths, you can see that now it's being more see-through, but it still looks kind of dark and a lot of people don't really know what to do from here. So what you'll need to do sometimes is just up this total path depth here to something like 16 or 32 or something like that. 
and you'll get a lot clearer of a glass object. And if we zoom in a little bit more, I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do to clear up your glass materials. So one thing a lot of people don't know is that there are a lot of sort of nested parts of the materials inside of LuxCore. And if you go over to your material output here, and we click this drop down here, you can see that there's a shadow color. And a lot of people, if they use cycles, will know that you can basically remove a shadow from a glass object or you know make it more transparent. The shadow part would be more transparent by using a light path node. But in here, it just uses this underneath the advanced. So if we take the shadow color here and we move it up, so up to pure white, it will actually take the shadow completely out and it will be a lot more see-through and it won't actually cast shadows. What you could also do is you could change the color here. So if I choose an orange and then I actually give this a little bit, you can see that you can make some really unique coloring. So let's go back up here, change this to a, uh, a brighter color there, and you can see that the shadow is now colored. So you can get some really neat effects by changing that shadow color just right there. And just to show you again how the shadow color can have some dramatic effects, here I have a metallic shader that's being used. And if we look down in here, you can see that if I change that to a pure white or closer to a white color, there is no cast shadow going on there. So you can really control a lot of how your object is rendering in the scene by controlling this shadow color here. See there, you can make it darker or lighter or whatever you want it to be. Now, another thing that's really awesome about LuxCore is the way that it handles the volume effects. And if you use cycles, you might be familiar with this, but basically there is a whole volume system here where you can actually create a set of volume materials and set that up to uh, basically be like a group to know that you can add to other materials. But I just added this heterogeneous volume here, which is basically one that offers the scattering effect here. And you can see that we made this more of like a solid color. It's got this interesting volume color and way that it's rendering here. And you can change the shadow color to something else to try and make it look a little bit more interesting. So you can see there, it's more of a blue shadow. And then the scattering here, you can change this to a more extreme color. And depending on which colors you choose, the scattering scale and how you set up some of these absorption properties, you can have some really cool effects for glass materials or anything that has a volume material added to it. Another thing I want to touch on very briefly here is that you want to make sure to set certain things in your rendering before you finish up for your final render. So if you go down the list here and you're doing an animation or something that has a lot of lighting or something like that, you can check these on and sometimes this can reduce the amount of time spent. I'm not going to talk too much about all, how all of this works. If you want, you can read up about it in the manual, but basically what this can do is create a cache for all of the stuff in your scene so that when you render this out as an animation or something like that, it should be able to render it out a lot faster. Another thing that you'll want to do here is that if you just set your scene to render without setting any of these halt conditions right here, it will basically keep running the render until you tell it to stop with the escape key. So if you want it to set some sort of samples or use time or a noise threshold or the light path samples or anything like this, you can basically set up a halt condition to run it until it stops. Or if you're doing an animation, you can set it to basically go according to whatever sort of values you set here. So make sure that, especially if you're doing an animation, you put in your halt conditions. Another thing here, this is where the denoiser is. You can choose different ones. And this denoiser is specifically for the render. If you look in the viewport render, there's a different area here for the denoiser, which I usually turn off because of some you know, issues with it. And I tend not to really like the denoiser look to the rendered image. But in here, you can see that the denoiser is here that you can turn on the Intel Open Image denoiser. You can try and use this one right here. It tends to have a lot of artifacting for me. So if I'm going to have the denoiser, I use that right there. And you can set some other parameters in there. One last thing to help you out for your rendering, because I know a lot of people have issues when it comes to rendering out their final image. What you'll want to use here is in the sampling section, you'll want to go down here and it starts off on progressive, which basically has 
one sample done for the entire image, what you want to do is change this to cache friendly. And that really does increase the speed of the output of the render. It might not look as pretty when you're watching it render, but when you have all of your settings figured out, this will save you a lot of time. And of course, if you need to use the tiled path or you need to use out of core, make sure that you use those settings as well. One more thing here is that you might want to set a clamping value if you have values that are way outside and you find a lot of little fireflies and stuff like that in your render, you'll want to set a clamping value here. Cycles usually starts off with a 10 for the value here for the max brightness. And you can see here there's a suggested value of 0.09, which would, which would basically darken everything in my image here. So I just set it to 50, which got rid of some of the super, super bright highlights and the little uh, fireflies that show up. And last but not least, when it comes to using light tracing for those really cool caustic effects, you might want to be careful with how much of the light rays you use. You might want to put this down to 20% or something like that to help you out with your viewport render and maybe push this up to 100 when you're done. I do recommend that you take a look at my video on how to create a composite of using the caustics inside of LuxCore for an animation with a uh, in you know mixing it and compositing it with another render engine for the rest of your scene because it tends to work a lot faster and a lot easier. I'm not going to show you how to do that here, but you can watch my videos on how to do that. I'll provide the links down below in the video description. So that is going to be all today. Thank you so much for everybody who uh, is you know watching and learning and following along with me. Thank you so much to all of my patrons and my YouTube members you guys are all awesome if you're interested in seeing how to become a patron please take a look down in the video description at the link and i will see you all next time on dj tutorials